Uh, 2.30 to drive to Santa Monica, left, 2.30. I'm sorry, where are you get Santa Monica? Santa Barbara. A distance of 95 miles. The traffic was heavy until 3.20. Okay, I get the point of this. Mm -hmm. She drove the rest of the way in very light traffic and arrived at 4.20. Uh, light traffic until 4.20. Blah, blah, blah. So heavy traffic speed was 40 mile an hour, then uh, slower than her speed in light traffic. Sounds about right. All right, so let's see here. We start to build this thing up to contain all this information they tell me. What goes up here? Thank you. And let's see. She's got to go 95 miles total. We know that. What are the two things I'm going to label these as? You. Light traffic, heavy traffic. Right. Come to work. And what do we know for sure? The speed. Yeah. We don't know the speed. The speed's going to be a variable because that's what the question is, right? Right, yeah. I meant like rail minus 40. Oh, I got you. Yeah. We do know the relationship for sure, but we know that, yeah, we know time. How long was she going in heavy traffic? 50 minutes. I like it. But what are, uh, and they want the speed. The speed is not going to be miles per minute. That would be kind of freaky. So it should be per hour. So 50 minutes. 50 minutes is how much of an hour? It's 50 out of how many total minutes? 60. So it's five six of an hour. I wouldn't put a decimal there because that's a decimal that doesn't end. See how useful fractions are? Now how about in heavy traffic? That's nice. Um, 60 one. That's an hour, yeah. One. The time in hours. As you can tell, if I'm like, how fast do you go? So many miles per minute. Who are you? That's for hours. Now, the heavy traffic, she was going, where'd he go? 40 miles an hour slower makes sense than the speed in light traffic. So which one would just be X? Um, light. Light. And then heavy, she's going 40 miles an hour slower. X minus 40. X minus 40. Yeah. I messed up because I didn't finish part. That's where I messed up. Do you I see how I have to refer back to the word problem several times? I don't try to get everything the first time I look through it. I look for it specifically for one thing, and then I look through it for another thing. I see a lot of students that I think you think you're supposed to be able to take the whole thing and blah, make it into an equation, which is insane. Nobody can do that. And now, how do I build these guys up? Five, six, X. Good. Five, six times X, just do what it says. And this would just be, this is beautiful. Yeah, one times this is just it. Now, what's the idea here? What are these distances supposed to do? Yeah, bless you. Add up to be 95. It's the total distance she had to go. You guys, you guys see that? Okay. 
No, that's where I'll stop you guys. The rest of it should be the easy step, but we'll see. So that plus that equals 95. The first thing I would do if I were you would maybe be multiply each piece by 6, right? Make that equation better. Is that, is that right? Yes? Uh, my question here is uh, I changed it. So I apply like this. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, no, no. You just have the words mixed around, right? That's all. Maybe a light? Yeah. Light here. Yeah, my light is. is uh, well, in light traffic, oh, okay, good job, Jeff, I'm so good at this shit. There's a mistake up here. She was in heavy traffic till 320. So these are backwards. You guess yeah, that? I kind of saw that. Yeah, so this should be, she was in heavy traffic, she's in light traffic yeah. until 420. So the light should have been an hour. Thank you. I thought when I, when I looked at it, I thought it was wrong. But I yeah, please. That you were Don't fabulous. hesitate. Because hopefully I'm not evil to you if you're wrong. And I, I know I'm human. I'm going to be wrong sometimes. Holy shit. Please point that out. I always hated those teachers who are like, well, I'm just. She tried to make mistakes. You will make a mistake. You just will. Just stop it. You can't live up to that. Anything? Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else about this? Yes. Um, I have a question in the same work. Form is on the two ninety one. Like Elvira and Lincoln. Oh my God! Just stick with Meg and Bob. Elvira and Alethea live three point miles apart on the same street. Their study group that meets at a coffee shop between their houses. All right. So this. If you remember the ones we did last time, we sort of categorized some of them. So this is one where they're coming to somewhere in the middle. So there's going to be a, uh, they're going to add to be some distance, right? So what's the huh? So they live 3.1 miles apart. So here's Elvira's Elvira. Yes, I didn't trust myself for a second. It's in the game. And there's a coffee house somewhere in the middle. It doesn't really matter where you put it. I don't know that it's halfway, it's just somewhere. So however far Elvira goes, and however far Alethea goes, these distances. Are you guys cool? Are you guys see? You don't have to do all this shit, but I just want to show you. Distance Elvira goes, is that cool? Distance Alethea goes. What do those two have to do? Add up to be this. Because neither one together, neither one went 3.1 miles. Together they went 3.1 miles because one came from this way, one came from that way. We saw a problem like that the other day. Where to go? Let's see. Oh yeah, so half an hour you want to put 0.5. Okay. Yeah, and. It took Alethea two thirds of an hour, so you could just put two over three. Okay, so yeah. you don't want to make them the same? Like, you don't want to make them both decimals? Is that, you know, you They're both, well, two thirds, if you made it a decimal, you could never finish it. Okay. All right, guys, you ready? So, if in the middle of a problem, don't replace two thirds with 0.67. Definitely don't replace it with 0.66, because that shit ain't right. 0.67 is more right because it's rounded correctly, but it's rounded. So your answer is going to be off, no matter what you do. Does it, do, you, do you understand that? If you round in the middle of a problem, your answer is not going to be quite right. And to be really honest, fractions are much nicer than decimals. You guys, I don't know if you trust me on this, because the minute I have a two-thirds sitting in my equation, what do I do? Multiply everything by three. Who cares? Because they give it to me in per hour, don't they? Yeah. Right? So your times have to match up with what's already there. Their speed is per hour. My times better be in hours. Funky delic. Yes? Uh, what did you get? 5 over 6. Oh. So it uh, started at 2.30. Until 3.20, it was heavy traffic, right? That's 50 minutes. 
but I need hours. So how much of an hour is 50 minutes, 50 out of 60? Yeah, why is 30 minutes half an hour? Because 30 out of 60 is one half. Yeah. So 50 minutes is not 0.5. That doesn't make any sense, because it's not out of 100. It's out of 60. And that's why it's 5, 6. How are you guys doing? You all right? You look beat up. Sorry. You guys survived Friday the 13th of the Harvest Moon? Yeah. Yeah. That was one of my classmates. Well, what is it? Fancy classmates' his birthday it was ready to hurt Do the harvest. There you go. That's very cool. We had we partied in this office. We didn't. <laughs> no. We had some drinks. It makes Friday the 13th feel better. I'm glad my birthday is off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else from homework stuff? In which section? 4-4. Four, 4-4, four. Four, four, look at you. I don't know if we've discussed it yet. Now we're going to do that today. So keep hold of that question and let me know later. Okay, let's get into what we're doing today. I have a DMV appointment right after this. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah? What's her name? <laughs> Does she have the... the back. Oh, okay. I was gonna say that. I need some help because I got that one eyeball ain't working, so I'm a little concerned. But oh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Prescription glasses? No, it's no. That won't help. No. <laughs> Sammy Davis, no. Mr. Bobo Gentles. All right. Um. So last time we left off, we did that one sheet. I think everybody should have a copy of that. You can see the video if you want to. By the way, the videos, I had some technical difficulties with videos deciding to almost load and not, so then I had to re-upload them, so they're sort of out of order for anybody who actually looks at them. If you don't know this, I do tape the video, the lectures, and put them up on the YouTubes and the Internet, so you can actually watch the lecture again if you want to. Um, so that handout we did, I think the last kind of problem... Yeah, I was dealing with scale and so forth and building up a, a table of values to plot a line. So let's start there. Let's do this little review. Actually, let me show you some kind of um, That doesn't look cool, Jeff. That yeah, it does. It's awesome. When you construct a table of values to plot something. What inputs do you have to use? That might be a loaded question. You can use any freaking inputs that make sense. I'm not going to use 9 million because I don't want to end up make my scale like that unless I have to. What would I? What would be a good thing to always use as a value for x to input? Yeah, I love it. Somebody's paying attention. That kicks ass. Zero for damn sure. What's wrong with using negative one and one here, though? Do you guys see this? You're going to have fractions. Now, I, and I promise you before that you don't have to use fractions in some cases, and this is one of them. I can be smarter about my inputs. As long as my input, one doesn't work, two doesn't work. Yeah, any multiple of three. So if I had two, two fifths, I would use multiples of five, maybe. Now, later, we're going to learn about slope. We'll be able to move around and shit, but... We don't want to officially know that yet. So if I make this xy table, I'm going to use 0, negative, 3, three positive. <laughs> Makes sense. Yes? Yeah. Yes. Yay. And then you can use 6 if you want to, right? In fact, let's do 6. Yeah, let's do 6. <laughs> Just to show you that it's multiples of 3. Why? Because the first thing I'm doing is divide by 3. So let me put a number in that makes that easy. So don't be mean to yourself. You can pick whatever inputs make sense. So what do you get when you put a negative 3 in? Yeah, good. So the negatives cancel, the 3's cancel, 1 plus 4 is? That's great. Okay. Second. 
get y equals negative one third times zero plus four. That's a nice one. Four. Somehow people do this, and the negative one third stays alive, and that's gross. <laughs> it's dead. Right? Hey, nothing survives zero, except infinity. We don't talk about. It. What about when I plug a three in there? Now this is going to be negative, negative one plus four is three. Don't get that lucky. Become a three. And then why did it get all to it? Negative one third times six. What's that? Good. Negative two plus four, two. Now watch this. You guys see the pattern, right? Every time x changed by 3, y changed by 1 down, negative 1. Negative 1 third. Right? You guys might remember slope is change in y's over change in x's. Remember that? Change in y, down 1, over 3. Down 1, over 3. Down 1, over 3. Okay. And now we'll graph this bad boy. The scale doesn't have to be anything too freakadelic. Uh, we could even go by threes on this. Three, six, negative three. Uh -huh. And then we got. You do it, Jeff. There you go, buddy. All right, because you can choose your scale, and you know x-axis makes sense to go by threes. Is everybody all right? Mm -hmm. Let me leave with these. There you go. So let's see, negative 3, 5, 0, 4, 3, 3, 6, 2. Okay. Oh, crap, it'd be bad. All right. Make that big. So, like I said, I think I told you this. If I was a student in my class, I would say, you better buy some freaking graph paper, young man. I'm not going to grade none of your shit. So, please look into graph paper if you are anywhere near as bad as I am at drawing things. I'm not calling anybody out specifically. Um, I, how's that? I mean, that's the problem we did last time. It's combining a few things. I know how to, once I got points, I know how to graph them, but where these points come from was the relationship between x and y. Therefore, the graph should have some relationship. Okay, I like it. That's sweet. All right, good. Um, now, make sure I'm going. What's the next thing I want to do? I got a little handout I'm going to pass out in a minute. Oh, yeah, okay. So that problem was all about creating points from a given line, plotting them, and I know it should make a straight line. So please, dear God, if you get points from a line and one of the points is there, don't just turn this thing around or something. Double check that point, right? Or just don't use it. The better would be to double check. Um, so here's one that's kind of backwards. Is the point negative 3, 5 on the line, um, what you got, Jeff? Y plus 2x equals negative 1. What the shit? So do you have to graph the line and see where the point is and all that kind of stuff? You guys see a better way to do this? Yeah. If that point is on this line, then what should happen when I plug the point in? It should be true. So every point the line goes through is a point that works in the equation. That's the connection. That's why I get a line's graph from finding points it goes through. That works in the equation. So that this is really the same problem, just from the other direction. So how do I do this? Well, what's this going for? X. So I got y is 5 plus 2 times negative 3. Some people like the little question mark up there because we don't know yet, but of course, yeah. 
Good Lord, this is not seven, right? Pass all that shit, right? Got to multiply first. So five minus six is negative one. Check. Yes. So there's going to be some problems like that. Verify this point is on the line. It's getting a little cooler, right? It does feel like yeah. the AC is waking up. <laughs> it's not hotter. Or maybe I'm just shutting down and I can't feel anything. All right. All right, so that's it. Now, let me ask you this. What is special about that point right there? It's on the y-axis. It's on the y-axis. What's zero there? You can do it. X is zero there. In fact, any point that's on the y-axis, what's got to be true about that point? X zero. Yeah, if I'm here, if I'm there, if I'm there, if I'm over there. Sometimes. It's going to be something zero. Oh, no, get out. Zero something. Maybe that heat is going to. Is that cool? So now watch this. What does that mean? And alternately, what about points that are on the x-axis? There, or there, or here. Yeah, why? That's the one. Yeah, there you go, buddy. Because again, this would mean don't go left and right at all. And then whatever number's there is obviously where I am on the y-axis. Yes. Uh, what really helped me was when someone told me the middle of the graph is zero, basically. Totally. Yeah, what's the middle of the graph? Zero, zero. It's called the origin. I like it. The gas. So when they're both zero, that's where it hits both lines. That's why it makes sense that's zero, zero. Okay, I like it. I got a question. Yes. Um, so if it's on the line, what quadrant would it be in? Oh, yeah. So it's not in a quadrant. So it's sort of like which yard am I in if I'm sitting on the fence, right? <laughs> and then you got the one neighbor's like, that's actually not my property line. Oh, shit. <laughs> Don't move. But yeah, it's on the fence. So if it says, uh, if there's a problem that says what quadrant am I in, and it's like one of these points, you would just say on the x-axis. It's not in a quadrant. It's not in both, and it's not in neither. It's just on the axis, in between. I like it. In between worlds. No. Um, so. What if I gave you this, find the x and y intercepts for, uh, you can do it, Jeff. All right, let's see what we can do. So I love this idea, because this happens a lot of math. I want this equation to tell me something. So I got this equation, I always got this weird thing in my mind. I got the equation in a chair, I get the light on it. Where were you on the night of? So how do I force this equation to tell me like the y-intercept? Yeah, if I make x zero, I'm going to make it talk. I'm going to make it tell me where it is on the y-axis. Because the y-intercept always has x equal to zero. So to find a y-intercept, you make x zero. To find the x-intercept, you make y zero. Now, just to freak your minds out a little bit, my last math course, math 696, I think it was. Yep. We had equations. That was we had equations with like 20 letters in them. If I wanted to find the W intercept, what did I do? I made all the other letters. Hey, so that idea is universal. Okay, I like it. So yeah, we were in 20 dimensional space. Not yeah, no, no one. Um, so to find the X intercept, make Y zero. Which means, now, now look, I'm going to make a mistake here, on purpose this time. Um, you're not going to know when it happens, get out of here, divide by two. Everything looks good so far, right? I'll tell you right now, everything looks good so far. Alright, y intercept, how do I find that? What, x equals zero? So then I get two times zero minus five y equals thirty. One big mistake people make here is the negative somehow goes away. No idea how that magic happens. 2 times 0 is 0 minus 5y. Negative 6. So then I have somebody do this. What point is that? Yeah. So the correct way to read any point is when x is 15, y is negative 6. That is not true. When x is 15, what's y? 
Ah, shit. So make sure you are finding two intercepts, two separate points. Because then you go to graph this, and I have people that draw arbitrary lines through it. You need at least two points to make a line, right? So these are two separate points. 15 is the x piece. Zero. I knew from the beginning zero was a y piece on that, right? And this one, the x piece is zero. And I know now the y piece is then two points that you can now graph. How would you construct a graph to graph those? What would be about the scales, maybe? Yeah, 15, so maybe by three zone both, right? Or maybe by fives, yeah, doesn't matter. You guys with me a little bit? Not really at all? So if I did this, one way I could do this is I can make this go by five on the x-axis. And then by threes on the y-axis. So now I can do 15, 0, plop, and 0, negative 6, plop. Oh my god, holy shit. Am I filming that? Is it working? It's a good day for me. I made a straight line. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry. Celebrate this moment. Yes. Now, did I have to make my scale like that? I could have made both of them 3, because 3 goes into 15, so that would have been easy. I could have made them both 1, but dear god. Try not to do that to yourself or me. Well, two different ways of No. Um, okay. So that's intercepts. That's all there is to those. Yes. Uh, so as far as scale goes, could you make the just for you know shits and giggles? Could you make the x-axis by increments of fifteen and the y-axis increments of six? Technically, yes. Cool. Great. End of the question. Moving on. What does that mean when a teacher says technically yes? It means yes, by all means. <laughs> it means probably you should put a little more effort into it. We'll leave Mark on points, because it's correct. Fine. Right. I'm glad that I did, just had to do the answer. Um, interpretive dance answer. And yes, for me, that was a um, what about? It? Oh, guys, when's the test? Thursday. Yeah, right? To quiz tomorrow. Yeah. Quiz tomorrow. Not test. Today's not review day. Yeah, I gave you the practice test way early just because I happen to have it. And I figured some of you guys do most of your work over the weekend, so I thought I'd give it to you. I'm going to have the answer key on Wednesday. Wednesday is review for the test. Yeah, but tomorrow we do have that quiz. All right. Um, just three. Yes. I'm pretty sure I said just three. Quiz is just on chapter three. I think, unless I said something different last time. I don't know. We'll make it official that it's just on. Word problems tomorrow. Just word problems. Just word problems. Um, <laughs> all right, now I gotta remember where I was. I know, now it's getting hotter again. We'll just do a few more things, guys. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Somebody, all right. All right, I want to do two different things here. Let me do the second one first. Um, if you, just looking at that, can somebody tell me the relationship between the y and the x parts? True, so somebody tell me every y is how related to its x. All the way through. Yeah. So this y is four times its x. This y is four times its x. This y is four times its x. So how would you write that equation? In general, what's true about all the y's? Each y is. What did we just say? I just. Two x. Four. Four. X. I never know if you're controlling me or what. 
You guys kind of a little bit? How about, let me see if you guys get this. Just to push a little bit. Um, three. I want to make this, you guys see how the only way I can write that down is if it's true always. Now this is not linear. I'll tell you that example. I'll tell you that right now. Huh? Square. In this case, y, every y is the square of its x. Through all of its x's step out. Through. All right. That's just one example of how to see a relationship. Can I always do that? Hell no. The relationship might be 5 nines x plus 11.2. I ain't seeing that shit from a bunch of numbers. Right? So what about um, let me think. Which method was I going to use? I want to kind of do it the same way Oh yeah, okay, that's perfect. So here's a nifty one. There's the line. Yeah, somebody got it. What's the definition of every point on that line? X equals two done. So it seems like a straight up and down line is x equals. Mm -hmm. Why does that make sense? Because no matter what I don't give a shit what y is. What's y? Anything it wants to be. Okay. Yeah. So x is always 2 no matter what y is. And if x is set, I can't move left and right. So I'm only able to move. Oh, holy shit. So it makes it up and down line. So what do you think this one is going to be? Yeah, y equals negative 3. Horizontal lines are y equals, because that means you can't go up and down, so y's got to be set. And vertical lines are x equals, because again, can't go left and right, x has got to be set. Woo! All right. Huh. So if you're trying to find, so if you're trying to find, you can move the origin to that origin as well, can't you? No, no, let's not do that. Yeah, that gets complicated. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can do all kinds of neat shit like that. Rotate. We don't want to do that. Okay. So last little thing on here. My memory is really. Oh, oh, this is huge. Um. All right. So. example I have this door and I have a ramp going up to it and I have steps going up to it. Yeah, I like it. With it. Let's say this is 10 and this is 2. So this would be 2. I like it. So in 2 feet it goes up 2 feet. You guys see that? And this one, it goes up two feet over the course of 10 feet. So which one has a larger slope? The stairs. the stairs or the ramp? 